Live from Clearwater, Florida, it's Make Money, Make More Money, Make Other People Make Money, the Scientology Way. And now, here's your host, entrepreneur and leader of the Church of Scientology, Mr. David Miscavige. Well, thank you very much, and tonight is the event you've been waiting for. Put it under the heading of behind the scenes, or let's just call it a little of what it takes to bring Dianetics and Scientology to the world. That's where we are going tonight. What do you do? And here's the answer. You were looked at as to how many services we could get out of you, um, and how much money we could milk you for. Now, how could that occur? You basically make the person feel really, really bad about the condition they're in. You take their problems and you magnify them. You look at how that's going to affect them in the future and you get the person into a state where they feel that their future is nothing unless they do something. And then you tell them that the only thing they can do is Scientology. That's not my idea. That's the LRH design. Take a look. People were persuaded to remortgage their homes, sell their homes, cash in the policies that were supposed to pay off their mortgages, borrow against their pensions, sell their family jewels, borrow from their families, sell their cars. Anything you can possibly imagine that a person could do to raise money, people were persuaded to do to pay into Scientology. When you get the tech as LRH intended, in the exact form he intended, you get the results he intended when you apply it in your life. So let me show you. Nuclear physicist Adam Bird was milked for £34,000. He went to the Scientologists for help with dyslexia, but ended up borrowing from various different banks to buy courses. Then several Scientologists came to lodge with him to help with the hefty interest payments. During this event, they took over my life. I had not intended to put lodges in my house. I now had lodges in my house with Scientologists, one of whom was quite high up in their command structure. To help pay again, Another one of them had loaned my car and was supposedly paying me rent for it. I then didn't have any means of transport. Finley Kane says they charged $8,500 to his credit cards without permission. When they began phoning for more, he turned on his tape recorder. Hmm. So basically, I don't even have enough money for that. Just to even get to the point where I can do my own. You, you have quite a bit, though, John. I mean... You know, but I, th I don't think buying more is your problem. So your problem is your wife. <laughs> After this next one, I promise it's all downhill. John Buchanan was a Scottish landscape gardener who worked in Germany. He piled up huge debts with several German banks to buy Scientology courses and materials. To escape his debts, he committed suicide. He left a final note for his mother, Mary MacDonald. He explained that he believed that he would come back to life and return to Scotland. The Scientology had taught John Buchanan to believe in reincarnation. It's simply because someone from the wrong side of the gene pool messed up the manuscript. It was all too much for Richard, both physically and mentally. Richard borrowed £3,000 to pay for Scientology courses. Tony Clark and other Bournemouth mission officials wrote Richard several letters. Some of them distressed Richard so much he tore them up on the spot. Others warned him of the consequences if he quit Scientology and asked him to come into the mission. They phoned him four times a day, five times a day, for an hour each time on the phone. And while he was on the phone, he was shaking, he was a bit nervous, obviously frightened of something. Richard was anxious about the fact that he was wanting to leave Scientology and he was concerned that they were not letting him leave and that they were threatening to print personal information about him. That was what he voiced to me. Much later that night, Richard parked his car by the Clifton Suspension Bridge in Bristol. At 10 minutes to midnight, he jumped to his death. I feel and my family feel that Richard would still be alive today if he hadn't become involved with the Church of Scientology. And I feel that they have a responsibility for people that they're recruiting. And if people wish to leave the organization, then they need to give people that freedom to leave without harassment and without threat.
That's been an impossibility. And by the end of this evening's event, you'll know that to be a fact. And if that's a sampling, I assure you it's not even a half bit. As a matter of fact, we brought along a demonstration. Take a look. Lisa McPherson reached what is known in the church as the clear status, which promises inner peace and happiness. Just two months later, Lisa had a minor car accident, and after an ambulance arrived, she suddenly ran down the road, stripped off her clothes, and said, I need help. Paramedics took her to the hospital for observation. Several Scientologists suddenly appeared and persuaded her to return to the Fort Harrison. Her condition rapidly deteriorated. After 17 days, the Scientologists finally decided to take Lisa to a hospital. But the driver bypassed the closest hospital and didn't even stop at the next one or the one after that either. Instead, the Scientologists drove for 45 minutes to Newport Ritchie Hospital, where the emergency room doctor was a Scientologist. So, is that it? Not quite. Take a look. She was dead on arrival, emaciated and almost completely dehydrated. Too late for Lisa McPherson. The Florida medical examiner conducted an autopsy and noted hematomas and skin lesions that looked like insect bites. The report stated she died from a blood clot, brought on by prolonged bed confinement and severe dehydration. It's, it's just awful that anybody's allowed, how they can sit and watch a human being die like that. They got her no help. They watched her die. But even if you had a tinge of wonder about what that might entail financially, let me show you. Over a two-year period, Lisa McPherson spent $97,000. In fact, let's get down to real basics, so let me show you. A central doctrine goes like this. 75 million years ago, a tyrant named Xenu transported people from outer space to Earth, dropped them in volcanoes, then exploded hydrogen bombs on them. That experience is the root of all human misery today. Let's phrase it another way. You are stupid. Stupid. You now know why. You are stupid. And the only reason nobody's saying it is because it's so ingrained, nobody needs to say it. You'll know that to be a fact. You are stupid. Thank you very much for attending, and appropriately, I leave you with LRH. Do you ever think that you might be quite mad? Oh, yes. Yeah. The one man in the world who never believes he's mad is a madman. Well, Rach, the bit.